you ever noticed how many images or ideas we're bombarded with when it comes to being a sexual abuse or sexual assault survivor? It seems that the only messages that we get are in relation to how damaged you are as a result, how traumatic the experience is. And it is. There's no doubt about that. But what always seems to be missing from the conversation, and really why I even do what I do, is healing is not being talked about. In fact, whenever you do hear people talking about the effects of being abused or somebody who's a survivor, you often hear about how devastated they are and the impact that it has on their life in really negative ways in regards to being suicidal, being diagnosed with all kinds of different disorders, um, certainly PTSD, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder. There's so many different things that we are given in regards to what it means to be a survivor. And while I'm glad we're talking about it and that people are acknowledging the significance of what it means to be a survivor, we can't stop there. We have to talk about the possibility for healing. Because when you only talk about the devastation and the damage and the lifelong impact, you leave out a really important piece, hope. When you hear those messages all the time, how can you hope to ever feel better? How can you hope to have a strong, healthy relationship when everything that you see depicted is a crazy person who either kills their partner or stalks them, or is an emotional mess all the time. It's kind of hard to feel positive about your future when the only images and messages that you get are about the difficulties you're likely going to experience throughout your life. So I created Courageous Journeys as a way to help people believe in the possibility for hope and healing. And through my work now as a coach, but predominantly even just through these videos, through my blog, whether on my website or through Huffington Post, I want people to understand that healing is possible. You know, everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what your history is, you're going to have struggles in your life. There are people who have not been sexually abused who have more emotional issues than some people who have been. Being sexually abused does not mean that you are destined to live a life of devastation. It really doesn't. The reason that we tend to have all of those problems, and when I say we, I include myself in that. Fortunately, that's not where I'm at any longer, but I was certainly there too. But the reason that we struggle in such significant ways throughout our lives is because we don't get the help that we need. We come at any help that we do get from a place of hopelessness. It's more about managing symptoms than it is about healing. And I want that to change. We need for that to change so that people can believe in the possibility for hope. It's not a false belief. It really isn't. I know that when you are struggling, especially if you've been struggle, struggling a really long time, it's hard to believe in that hope. But throughout my entire career, really, I have seen that as my ultimate mission, to help people see that there is hope for healing. So then you may ask, what does that look like? What does it really mean to heal from a history of sexual abuse? I've said this before many times in different ways. Healing isn't about a perfect life. Nobody's life is perfect. There are people who have all kinds of issues, who struggle in relationships, who struggle with self-esteem and self-worth, and it's not at all related to sexual abuse. So that is a is kind of a um, 
Well, it's just an issue that a lot of people struggle with. It's not specifically only connected to people who have sexual abuse histories. However, I've never met anybody who has been sexually abused who doesn't have issues with worthiness and, and self-esteem and, and even hopelessness. Um, so healing is about letting go of what you believe about yourself and the possibilities for your life. So it's about letting go of the idea that you're unworthy or undeserving. Healing is about letting go of the guilt, the responsibility, the shame. It's about letting go of the ideas that there's nothing more for your life. It's also about being able to see yourself for who you truly are, who you've always been, buried beneath all of that pain. I've said this before too, healing isn't about changing who you are. It's about uncovering who you are by breaking all of those layers of pain. When you do that, when you're able to recognize what your beliefs are about who you think you are and what you can expect for yourself in the world, when you let go of that, you make space for the real you to come through. That's what healing is. I know it can feel overwhelming because you think there's so much to change. And there are some things to change. You have to learn new ways of coping. You have to let go of some of the ideas that you have about yourself. There is change that has to happen, but you don't change who you are. You uncover who you are. Healing also means that you are able to be in a relationship any kind of relationship, and feel connected and feel that you have as much to offer, that you have as much value as the person you're in that relationship with. I know that may seem like a foreign idea to so many of you, but it is possible. It doesn't mean that you're better than. It doesn't mean that you're smarter or stronger or anything else. It just means that you are able to recognize that intrinsically within yourself, you have value as a human being. And no matter who you're with, who, no matter who you're having a conversation with or working for or anything else, that you bring value to that situation as well. It's being able to recognize that what you think and feel matters. And it's okay that it matters. And that doesn't take away from the fact that other people matter too. That's what healing is about, and healing is possible. It's not easy. Letting go of those old beliefs is a complicated process because those beliefs become so ingrained, we, we don't even think about them. Many of us don't even know that they exist, but they are there driving our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors every single day, every day. When you're feeling good, when you're feeling bad, our core beliefs are dictating how we live our lives. Changing those beliefs is a process. You can't go from believing in one thing wholeheartedly, completely, without even having to think about it, to no longer believing in that and believing in something else. That's why healing takes time it takes practice. It takes experiences to show you who you really are. So the conversation really needs to focus not only on helping people realize that they're not alone, which is a really important piece of it, don't get me wrong, and that's really imperative to, to healing and to to feel that there's something worth healing. Um, that's a really important piece. But if you don't believe that healing is possible, if you believe that your life is doomed to be what it's already always been, then why would you ever seek help? Why would you ever choose to do the things that are necessary to heal? So in talking about the real possibility 
of healing, we can start helping people recognize that your life does not have to continue to be the way that it's always been. And I want that for you, and you deserve that. So join me and join us in this movement to talk about the real possibility for healing from childhood sexual abuse. It's such an important piece of moving beyond the pain, and it is possible. Thanks for joining me. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.